One facet of Saturday's attacks never seen before on this scale, the taking of hostages by Hamas. Men, women, children, and the elderly. Dozens reportedly kidnapped and forcibly taken to Gaza, their locations within the densely packed enclave unknown. And tonight, Hamas is threatening to execute them if Israel targets civilian homes without advance warning. Nick Schifrin spoke with two women now enduring the horror of missing loved ones. One month ago, Shaili Atari and Yahav Winner celebrated their newborn, Shaya. On Saturday, the family was torn apart. In the early morning, um, I was awake. I was supposed to give her food when we heard the first bombing in uh, my kibbutz, Kfar Aza. I thought it's a regular bombing we have like uh, each couple of months there. But then I, we understand it's bigger. And then after 15 minutes, we heard uh, shootings. And uh, people are uh, voicing, saying ta'al, ta'al, which is like uh, come, come in uh, Arabic. So three minutes after that, um, we heard them outside of our bedroom. They just opened the window and uh, put their hand inside my uh, bedroom. But my husband, before when we heard them, we had a signal that said, you are keeping the door. I'm with the child. When they put their hand to open the window, he pushed them to the other side and gave me a look to go away. So I took my daughter, a one month old daughter with no shoes, no, no phone. My husband was left with there with a lot of people with, that want to kill him probably. And I ran away. I, I ran, but uh, inside of bushes, so they won't see me. They were shooting at me and my daughter. We had inside the shed of our neighbor, Rachel, and um, I heard voices near, so I took um, things like uh, bowls, you put flowers in, and I put the empty ones, and I put them on me and Shaya uh, with buckets of, uh, of uh, sand for, for the garden, so, and I hide uh, um, behind a washing machine. But then after a while that I had I sh uh, Shaya all the time, she was sleeping. But then inside the, the shed, she started crying after a while. So then it's when I understand that I have to go outside of the shed, but there are much more bombing and shooting over there. But then one family, actually they saved me. They were the only one who opened. They had a camera of, uh, around the house and they could see I'm not one of them. So they could see I'm with a child. They opened up the house with a child and we were in that house for 20 seven hours they were bombing 27 hours and they're they are still bombing now and there are still families over there and missing people my husband is missing so please if someone sees him he has a tattoo of a feather a color one he's white he has brown hair and blue eyes and uh, i'm looking for him because we didn't find his bodies we had a lot of bodies for us and they didn't find him i'm i don't know like in this time I quite hope he is uh, kidnapped to to Gaza. I know it's like not like a great hope, but if I think of the hours that that were since the bombing, it's too much time for him to last. So I hope he's he was kidnapped. I hope. Right? <laughs> Can you tell me about your husband? He is a good person. We like the quiet, and he always liked the quiet. He's a great filmmaker and he's a great friend. He was my best friend. We, we were 10 and a half years together and we waited a long time for this child that we now have, Shaya. So, so I hope, uh, I hope it will come back and she will see her. I have an infant daughter at home. <laughs> I can only imagine. Uh, how terrifying this has been for you as a new mother. Yeah. It was very hard for me to keep Shaya calm and quiet because every time she cried, we were getting shootings. And every time Shaya cried, the bombing was doubled because I thought I, it's felt like it's like a prize to kill that baby. And every time she cries, they try to kill her. We didn't have nothing to give her to food. We didn't have water, so she had to go to a hospital because when she came, the baby was apathic. She she was white, and she she had she had to take oxygen.
so that whole time you had no formula to no. give Shia. It came after 27 hours of not eating. The hospital wrote that she had, uh, she was so dehydrated that she cried with no, uh, no drops. No yeah, tears. tears. At the same time, 20 miles away, Hamas gunmen were also going house to house in Niraz. They kidnapped five members of the same family, 80-year-old Carmela Dan, her son-in-law Ofer Calderon, and her three teenage grandchildren, Sahar, Noya, and Erez. Abby Own is their cousin. We know that the next few hours were horrifying there, that Hamas burned the majority of the kibbutz and slaughtered uh, most of the people there that the people who um, survived were taken hostage. What we understand uh, one day after was that um, we got a video of my 12-year-old cousin uh, being held hostage by Hamas, and we believe that he is in Gaza. The Israeli foreign ministry uh, just a few hours ago said, at least publicly, there is no intention to negotiate for the release of Israelis being held hostage inside Gaza. Do you want them to negotiate? I want them to do whatever it takes to get them home. Home is now a hard concept for Shaili. Her house has been burned. Her faith comes from her daughter. How is she doing now? She's good. She's strong. She's a strong kid. She's good. Her color came back. She started eating last night. She was, she's, she's now OK. She is giving me faith. And I feel that Yahav is not is not dead. This is what I feel. They didn't find his body, and I, I, I can feel his soul is not talking to me as if he's dying, as if he's not in this world. I feel is like sending me messages of like, you fool, I'm, 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 don't cry, I'm here. But I still cry. And we're thinking about you and praying for you and your family. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.